Welcome Total War fans, I am Indie Pride, and today I'll be showing off the vampire counts and green skins in a 40 unit cap battle on Total War Warhammer. I'll be honest, I really enjoy playing larger funds battles on this game more than the default funds. I feel like with all the expensive monster units and artillery in this game, it's really hard to field a composition that looks like a proper army. When you boot the unit cap up to 40 for each player, it lets you round out your army build and take the units and the monsters that make Warhammer so awesome. So at least for the cinematic side of things, the bigger battles just look better, in my opinion. Oakley High Def will be my opponent, and both of us have brought around 3,000 men to the battlefield. Oakley is playing the Greenskins, and he has Azhag the Slaughterer on Skull Muncha, and he's going to go right for my lines at the beginning of the battle. And really, this is not the way you want to be using wyverns or dragons in this game. He's going to go for my very low tier cheap meat shields, kind of unsupported. And I'm going to drop Spirit Leech with Manfred von Karstein, which is a single target DPS spell that, from what I've seen, generally does around one third of an enemy Legendary Lord's health pool. So Oakley is going to be pulling out of that engagement, and honestly, he's already taken some damage on his Lord that he really didn't need to. Greenskins need their Lord to be effective in combat, and they need him for the leadership buff. So he's dropping Purple Son of Zarius in the background there. You see that Vortex spell going off. It looks really impressive, but like I think I've already mentioned it so far, a lot of these Vortex spells are pretty underwhelming. Uh, Purple Son of Zarius can be nice to break up a formation when you're about to charge in and prevent them from getting a bracing bonus, but I mean, look at the damage that it did. It did about like 300 HP damage to a couple units of Grave Guard. It's very minimal the amount of damage it does for the amount of winds of magic you're spending so so far i think the single target dps spells are a much better investment of your winds of magic and of course the buffs are quite good as well as you saw in my last replay with the lore of metal and balthazar gel again as the slaughter is going to be going in for another charge onto my skeleton warriors these are meat shields they're they're there for literally the purpose of taking charges like that so I think he's kind of playing into my hands a little bit here, and I'm going to cast Spirit Leech on him again. Again, that single target DPS, taking him down to about half HP, and he's going to take that opportunity to then send in his Orc War Big Uns, and they're going to start doing some damage to my front lines, but I have five zombies and I believe three Skeleton Warriors who are designed to take charges like this. I'm going to follow it up with a charge for my Black Knights with Lances and Barding. going to be a good charge there, and I'm going to try to tie down his Orc War Big Uns and do some damage in combat. Azhag has pulled out of the engagement again, gonna be going for some buffs on his troops. Again, the leadership buff from Azhag is super important for the Greenskins. They do have pretty wonky morale. If you lose your Legendary Lord early on in the game with the Greenskins, it can be very bad for them. And now my Grave Guard with great weapons are into combat with these other more boys. And over on this side, the Vargeist is trouncing on the Arachnorite Spider, which is in the middle of a bunch of Grave Guard and my Karn Race are on that flank as well. I'm trying to overload his flanks, basically get my ethereal units into positions where they can get flanking charges or rear charges off, but Oakley is gonna stream out of the trees here with a Savage Orc Big Uns, and he's going to actually try to outflank me. This is a really nice move from him, kind of an ambush sprung from the flank. He's gonna try to get around the side and charge into my Karn Race from the rear. Goblin Archers moving up now, taking some pot shots in my right flank, but far out on the sides of the battlefield, I have my flyer circling, looking for some juicy targets. This is a Terror Geist, the monstrous skeletal bat. Also have a unit of Vargeist and some Fell Bats over on that side. And I'd argue that the Vargeist and the Fell Bats should be considered core in most Vampire Counts armies. They're so versatile and so quick and can hammer an animal so easily. I think they're pretty much always worth it. So my Black Knights with Lances and Barding are going to charge through the center here. This, I kind of got a little bit hasty here. I'm going to send them forward. Oak is going to do a really good job overlapping them and hammering and ambling my Black Knights. So I'm going to be able to tie up the center of his army, but I'm going to end up losing these two Black Knights pretty easily. He did a really good job overlapping and just kind of pancaking them. They'll crumble very quickly there. In the center, my Meat Shields and my Grave Guard have moved up and began engaging. Manfred von Karstein moving up as well, getting ready to buff my troops, and Azhag is still kind of hovering a little bit too close to the engagement, especially considering how low he is at the moment. He needs to be really careful with Azhag. If he goes down right here, it could spell doom for the Greenskin army. Again, they do have wonky morale. If he goes down, that could be really bad. And Manfred is really close by. He's casting a debuff on my Vargeist, and actually, I'm going to be able to cast Spirit Leech on him He's going to pull away from the engagement, but you saw how low his health was. 
I don't think he's going to be able to pull away and survive that Spirit Leech. And actually, he is going to go down. And that is really bad for the Greenskin army. That's going to send a big morale shock rippling down his main line. You need to be careful with your legendary lords in this game. They're tanky and they're survivable as the Var guys come in for a massive hammer and anvil. Oh my god, that was so scrumptious. But, and, and honestly, the legend, legendary lords can do a lot of damage, but if you notice constant hexes getting placed on your lord, or if they're too deep into combat, it's time to move him further away so your lord doesn't go down, because if they do as a greenskin or a vampire counts player, your army's gonna fall, up, fall to pieces really quickly. Just saw the White King and the Vargulf chasing off some of his routing troops. They will start coming back and filtering back into combat, but they are going to have that morale debuff on them for the rest of the battle. It's gonna make it hard for him to win. The Karn Wraiths are in there, they cause fear, they're ethereal, they're very tanky, he doesn't have any magic from Skull Muncha and Azhag anymore to get rid of those ethereal units very easily, so he's gonna have to rely on crumbling with flanking attacks. And with a lot of his mainline routing, it's going to be very hard. I actually did forget to put Manfred on a zombie dragon in this battle. I had meant to. I just forgot about the mount, so he's going to be dismounted. And it's actually not a bad thing. I've been able to keep him far back and protected very well by my main line. Over on this side, Karn Race moving in to get a charge off on some of his savage orc big boy... Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the boar big guns and my Vargulfs are going to charge in there as well. And this is, again, going to be a tough engagement for him. He didn't really get a great charge off. Orgul's going to start smashing things. Karn Race with that high armor piercing is going to be able to cut through the big guns quite quickly. Those are not savage, by the way. They're just regular boar boy big guns. So, yeah, I'm going to be winning on this flank. Balance Bar definitely shifting in my favor. The Vargeis and the uh, Fell Bats are tied into combat. This is really not how you want to use them. You don't want to be engaging stuff in the front with them. They're more for hammer and anvils using that mobility. But the Fell Bats are only 300 talents, they are extremely useful for their cost. They can meet shield, they can chase off flyers really well, they can tie stuff down so that the Var guys can get into combat. They're extremely good, I think they are they should be considered poor for most vampire counts armies as well. The White King is in combat against some of his Black Orcs. He's gonna be beasting up in melee here. And yeah, there's just a lot of routing on the Greenskin line at the moment. The Terror Geist has finally gotten into combat, decided to commit him against some of the Goblin Spears. You can see that awesome animation where he kind of grabs a Goblin and bites down on it, throws it up in the air, and tosses him side to side like a ragdoll. We'll probably get to see that a couple more times in this battle. Really cool animations on him. And yeah, the Terror Geist is going to be able to tie up this whole flank very nicely while his Goblins are shooting in. So I am going to make a little bit of a micro mistake here. I kind of lose track on my Vargeist. They're just going to keep getting shot by the, Arc, the Orc Error Boys. And I should have already had my Vargeist into combat here. They could make those Orc boys route very easily. But, yeah, the Fell Bats in combat as well, doing some damage. And the rest of my army, the Grave Guard with great weapons, are moving up. And those were my core, and they have performed extremely well. I've just, in general, the games I've played so far, the great weapons are too good not to pass up. They're kind of expensive to bring, but in a battle like this, it's very easy to bring a core of them. You have... 24,000 talents to work with and I mean even in the lower funds battles like great swords is a core grave guard with great weapons is a core it just works very well from the battles I've played so far Bar guys finally gonna get into combat here with the air boys and I should be able to trounce them pretty easily Arachnorak spider moving around and yes the green skin morale is very wonky but I think a lot of this had to do with the, the legendary lord going down very early on in the battle. I'll be honest, I haven't seen Greenskins win a game yet, but it's only been a handful. It's a very small pool of games that we've been able to play from. I am sure people are going to be able to figure out ways to use the Greenskins effectively. I've only played them once. I did lose with them in a 2v2. I don't think they're a bad faction, or at least I can't honestly say from the pool of games that I've played so far that they are bad. Their morale is not the best, it's one of the worst in the game for sure, but I don't want to say that they're a bad faction yet because we really haven't figured out the meta for them at all. I'm, I would not be surprised to see Agony Duck or some really talented players get some really good green skin armies going, so don't bury them just yet. Uh, we have more to see from the green skins for sure, but vampire counts in this battle are going to take the field. And a pretty similar amount of kills on both sides, actually. But yeah, losing Azhag the Slaughter so early 
really hurt Oakley. Hope you guys enjoyed this game. Much more Total War Warhammer content coming soon, and I have something very special planned for you guys over the next day or so. So hopefully that'll get done. I'll see you soon.